Hey, welcome back to Goalie Training Pro TV. Uh, being quick and agile from your butterfly is a make or break ingredient for you. It's part strength, uh, part power, part skill. Today I'm gonna give you three exercises that work on all of those elements and you're really gonna feel an improvement on the ice. It, it's even gonna help even out your strong side and your weak side, we all have one. So that's what I got for you today. So as soon as you see these drills, you'll immediately recognize how that's going to translate to help you on the ice. Even better, once you take the time and effort to do the drills, you're going to feel in your muscles exactly how they're going to translate onto the ice because it's going to be the same kind of thing that you feel limits you on the ice that are going to be those muscles that fatigue when you do these drills off the ice. I'm Maria Mountain. I'm an exercise physiologist. I specialize in off ice training of hockey goalies. And when I study movement in goalies to come up with these off ice exercises, I don't just sort of check my Instagram feed and be like, that looks cool. I actually think about them. And when I think about these movements, crease movements from the butterfly, I really picture Carey Price as, as the gold standard because he does such a good job of keeping a neutral pelvis and I think that's what helps him move as fluidly and look as relaxed as he, as he does. So what I do is I, I study Carey's movements and then I apply the biomechanics and the anatomy and the physiology to it and come up with these three drills that I have for you right now. So I like this exercise for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, he's sort of in his half kneeling extended position. So he gets a chance to keep his hips really tall. He's not sitting his bum back as he does this. He's stacked over that knee, which is exactly where we want him. Then I just have a towel here and a 10 pound plate on top of the towel. Um, and it, again, resist the temptation to make it like, I'm gonna do it with a 45. It, it's not meant to be that. But what I like, we also do a version that's similar with a bungee, but what I like about this version is he has to push down a little bit into the floor, into the towel. Otherwise, his his foot's gonna just slide right off, and which is what you have to do too. You can't just brush your skate along the ice. You have to push down, get that edge, hold that edge as you drive. The other thing I like about it is it's not just the lateral drive, so he's using the muscles on the outside of his hip, but then he also has to pull it back up using the muscles on the inside of the hip and the groin, because I think sometimes we spend too much time working on the powerhouse and not enough time working on the antagonist muscle group. So as he does this for us in a second, you're gonna see he keeps a really, really stable torso. He's not gonna fold at his hips at all. He's also gonna think about recovering this leg by bringing his knee up and in. So it's gonna be sort of a knee focus. And I'll show you the option, what we don't want him to do in a second. But just show us maybe three really good reps here, Carson. Yeah. So he brings that knee up. You can see at the finished position, his knees push, pointing straight ahead. He set himself up into a really good pushing position and he's got some force down on there. Now, here's what some people do by habit or it just naturally feels like what they should do. They almost pull, their, push their knee up, yeah, and then kind of swoop in by internally rotating the hip. This is a lot of stress on the inside of the knee. You can probably feel it's a little bit of torque on the inside of the knee. Plus it just isn't an efficient position or an efficient way to recover if you're moving on the ice. So make sure you think about drawing that knee kind of straight up on an angle like that to your uh, ready position. So I'm kind of sprung one on uh, Carson because he's never had to do this one in his workouts before. So, uh, But what we've got on are basically just, um, just like goalie knee pads underneath. We also have like some rollerblade knee pads that work. I think it's, they need to, it's best if they have a hard shell because just because it seems like it slides better. And then we just have hockey socks doubled up over top, but what he's gonna do is he's just gonna do like his uh, like a half butterfly push um, on the wood floor. So it, it doesn't have to be a wood floor. We do this on the slide board is usually where he does it, uh, but not all of you have a slide board. So it also works on this wood floor. We do it when we work with sort of a team or something like that. Um, so if you have linoleum, wood floor, any smooth sliding surface will do. So what he's gonna do is get in that half butterfly position and then push go just a little bit slower for these first two because i want them to see how you're getting that nice recovery and then a push out to the side but still staying really stable in your torso 
Yeah. Yeah. So notice how his shoulders stay nice and level, and it's hard because you will hit little, just like on the ice, you'll hit a rod or you'll hit a little sticky spot, and you really have to try and work and keep that balance. So I want you to also realize there's kind of a difference in how you can push. You can do a, a really big power push, which you need sometimes in a desperation type of save, but then there's also some little quick powerful pushes, which is typically more what we're after. You know, anytime you take a big, huge push, well, you've just opened a big hole that then takes more time to close up again when you get where you're going to make the save. So it does make you more vulnerable. So if you can get from the here to there with a quick push, not only are you using less energy, but you're also not making yourself so vulnerable by opening up great big holes. So maybe just show like, like one or two big pushes and then a couple little pushes. So we'll start with a big push. Yeah, good. So he's getting, you can see how he's kind of getting that full extension. And now could you just do a couple little quicker punches? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And then back again. Yeah, beautiful. Good. And you can stop. So the last drill I'm going to give you is just a knee recovery lateral hop, kind of back down into your knees. Now, don't worry about doing your butterfly in this. It really doesn't add a lot to the exercise, and it can actually add some wear and tear to your hips. If you want to wear your knee pads when you do this one, I'm pretty delicate, so I usually like to wear my knee pads, but whatever suits you. The key is, once I get to the other side, you're not smashing down into your butterfly. You're just settling back into it. So Carson is going to come in here in a second and show us how it's really done. But I want you to think about, hey, where would my glove be? Where would my blocker be? If I'm moving this way, then, you know, where's the puck? So I'm going to practice those little habits uh, off the ice as well. So if I'm moving here, I'm going to come up, glide across, and then back down into my butterfly ready for the next shot. Um, we're going to have Carson show the difference too between taking a big, huge push and opening up those holes like we just talked about versus taking a sort of more quicker impulse of a push so that we're not opening as much holes and we're being a little more efficient with how we use our muscles. Because it also doesn't make big sense, good sense to, you know, do a humongous push across and then have to throw up a whole bunch of snow to stop us once we get there if we could really just get there just as quick with a quick impulse. So Carson, come on in here and help us out. So we'll start with, yeah, thinking of, yeah, blocker, glove. Let's say you're going to come over here, the puck's over here. Let's start with showing kind of a, that big, big power push, which, again, sometimes you need it. And see how he just settles down. So you're not smashing into the butterfly. That's not what we're trying to do. Because you come back this way again, doing that big power push. Good, good. Do you notice how he keeps his shoulders level, keeps his torso, moves with his hips. He's not side bending away in the direction he's trying to go. Could you show us now, go across and then come back, which is a quicker power push. Yeah, settling in. Perfect. And stop. I'm going to give you a little bonus tip too. If you're a little shaky on your, on your butterfly crawl, so when you're moving on the ice with one pad down and it just is challenging for you, you're losing your balance, you're tipping over, one of the best things you can do is just work on your single knee balance. So get everything stacked. Again, I'm right over my knee, my knee, hip, and shoulder in a line. I'm just going to pick up that foot and I'm going to practice getting really comfortable balancing on my one knee because that's a part of it you know we're used to balancing from our foot we don't really think about it but we have all those muscles in our lower leg and our foot and our ankle that help balance us when we're balancing on our knee we really have to be very very good at using our hip and our hip isn't used to having that kind of fine motor control but as a goalie it's exactly what you need it's so important so even just try it right now for 30 seconds, balancing on a single knee, and you'll be surprised. It just You'll be all over the place. You won't be able to do it without putting your foot down or your hand down. And then think of what, how much time you spend you know, in transition. When I push and then recover, well, I have to be stable and I have to be balanced over this, over this knee. So that's going to be a huge one. If you don't do it already, start doing it right away, and you'll notice within like three days an improvement on the ice. So those are three ways to get you moving faster on the ice from your butterfly position. 
if in the back of your head you're like, oh, that's going to be awesome, I'm going to do that, but really what I need is better mobility. I just can't move. I don't have a wide butterfly flare. I can't get my body in RVH, forget about it. Uh, I've got something for you that will look after that. It's free too. It's called the Butterfly Challenge. Um, what I'll do is I'll put the link in the first comment below, uh, maybe somewhere else, and you can check it out. Um, it's a 14-day flexibility program. only takes about 10 minutes a day to do. You're going to have a wider butterfly flare and looser hips in the next two weeks. I promise you, it actually works. <laughs> I'll share another little secret uh, with you is that my movement in the crease from the butterfly got, because I'm just figuring this stuff out and I'm not very good, but it made a world of difference when I started using a, a sliding cream on my pad. So there's a couple of different brands you can get. I know Paso makes a brand. Um, I know there's one called Ice Cream, which I was really excited when I got it in the mail because I thought it was actually ice cream, but it wasn't. Um, so don't eat it. But I actually started out just using Glide Wax. I was an old cross country ski racer, so I've got tons of wax in the basement. So I pulled out some Toco Yellow if you're interested and just put that on the sliding surfaces of my pads. And then I just kind of smoothed it in. And again, like it used to be full effort pushes like Carson was doing for me to get from one post to the other. And once I put that sliding cream on, I know some of the new pads have that sliding skin or whatever they call it, but uh, like I would do a full push and slide like three feet out of my crease. So what it did is it let me again, be much more efficient with my movements. It took a lot of getting used to because it, I was way over sliding the puck, but uh, you know, within a, 20 minutes, I'd kind of figured out, okay, well, this is where I'm going to end up. So that's a little bonus tip for you. I don't know if you've ever used it. Uh, if you've ever used it, put a comment, let me know how you liked it. If you're like, what is this sliding cream of which you speak? Uh, let me know that too. Cause I can do another video showing you like exactly what it is, how I put it on, how it works. Um, so just leave any of that in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up because that makes YouTube think I'm a beauty. Uh, subscribe if you want to get the videos before anybody else. If you have any questions at all about off-ice training uh, to be a better goalie and stop more pucks, leave that in the comments below. I answer each and every single one of them. So that's it for today. See you next time.